Hey guys, Infidel1258 here. I've got 11 gold loot chests and we're going to open them and we're going to do an analysis of those rewards. But one of the things I want to talk about in addition to just looking at these rewards is, is a quick topic around how many cards you can get from just playing this game. I really believe there's a lot of people who think you don't get a meaningful amount of cards from playing and that you have to buy cards. And while it's absolutely true that buying cards or renting cards can allow you to snowball what you're doing by getting you a head start on your growth, it's certainly possible. It's 100% possible to earn a significant amount of cards every season for free. Um, those would be reward cards, and those reward cards can be a meaningful part of the compilation of your deck. Not everything, because you're going to need to supplement with 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 uh, summoners. Um, but man, let's talk about it. I want to show you some numbers after we look at these loot chests. 11 goldies. I really haven't been playing this season at all, because I'm renting for massive gains. Um, and... I think I'm going to keep doing that. I'm just going to play here or there, like in fits and spurts. I'm definitely hitting those brawls and I'm hitting them hard, but I'm not really focusing on the rank play because one, there's there's it's really hard to climb due to lack of partners, lack of matches, um, lack of opponents that are equally like at my elo. And as a result, I think it's this is a difficult time to be climbing the ladder. And I find my the financial returns are greater with just renting, but. For those of you who aren't sharing the same story as me, let's open 11 gold loot chests. Ooh, I love to see that. 6 SPS, 0.5 SPS. This is a big multiplier for gold league. This must have been like among the biggest of the possible multipliers, right? Because this is far more common at gold than this is. If this was a champion chest, that would have been like, you know, 40 or 400 or I think it would have been probably something like, yeah, 50 or you know, so SPS, I bet. This is a card I've been sleeping on. The Vampiric Blossom is actually pretty serious. It's beaten me a number of times recently. Uh, you know, it's contextually, you gotta, it's gotta be the right context. But yeah, it's got some, it's got some power to it. I wanna look at it quickly. So it's got the Oppress at the, at the first level. That's great. It's not you know, game breaking or super, super impactful. It can be powerful. Of course it is powerful in the right context, but you know, without the right, without an, a monster on the other, on the opponent's side that, that lacks an attack, it does nothing. It doubles your damage. If the, your opponent, if the recipient of your damage has no attack, but if that's not your, who you're fighting, then it really, it becomes irrelevant. Um, death blow is similar in the sense that, yeah, if you're fighting the last monster on your opponent's team, it's really helpful. If it's a Kron, if it's a last stand monster, you know, death blow oppress, uh, death blow can be really huge. But um, again, contextually, it doesn't necessarily always apply. But as you get into the higher levels, especially, you start to see a significant amount of damage, which theoretically can be doubled and theoretically can be uh, quadrupled, right? If you picture the Vampiric Blossom going against, for instance, a, la a last stand cube, gelatinous cube, you're doing three damage at diamond, which turns to six damage, which turns to 12 damage because of the death blow. And then immunity is key, right? Because there's noxious fumes feels like it plays way more often nowadays. And uh, I've seen people use this with specifically with burn hurt for that close range opportunity attack, uh, archery attack, or I've also even seen it with bright and bloom. So it has flight and therefore is resilient through noxious fumes and earthquake. Um, and so, it depends on the summoners you have, but definitely I think this card's better than the price implies. What are we looking at here, grid-wise? Yeah, I mean, this is a cheap card. And mind you, like I said, it's it's not a, it's not an everyday card. It's not like a card you need every single second of every single game. But yeah, I like it. Uh, let's go back. A little bit more SPS, Pelicor Deceiver. We've talked to death about these ones. Obviously, I like them. Strong cards. And and uh, I'm happy to have multiple copies of each. I have, I must have 10 copies, 20 copies of each, maybe. Cool. Love the SPS accumulation. Uh, love the cards. And look, here's the thing. Card drop rates. This is what I want to finish on. Card drop rates are roughly 23% per loot chest. And that's at bronze all the, you know, up. 
And so you're going to get reward cards significantly distributed within your loot chest. And here's the thing. It's not hard to get 10 loot chests, especially if you're, you know, even if you're playing with a silver level deck, maybe even particularly if you're playing with a silver level deck, if you don't know this, you can start an account. You can play on your account number one, your main, and you, you start a, bron a, a, a novice and you climb into bronze and up through into silver, assuming you have that 15,000 collection power. And then when you're there, you're going to be accumulating on the season. You're going to be accumulating the, the loot chests that are appropriate for the starting point of you during that season. So that would be bronze for you. You're getting bronze chests, and that's going to be easy to stack up 40, 50, 80 uh, loot chests, even at silver. And if that's with you playing on the season loot chests. You playing it every day, you're going to get 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 chests by the end of the season. And then also, you're going to get some number of chests a day, maybe five. But if you imagine you're going to get five loot chests a day and five times 15 is 75 chests from your dailies. Plus, let's say you're going to get 50 more from from your end of seasons, which I think is very conservative. You're going to get 125 loot chests from from that one account that is like, let's say, 15,000 collection power. That's totally plausible. Assuming you start at bronze and you're going to go ahead and you're going to divide that. Or you're going to times it actually times it by 0.25 because it's actually i think it's 2.3 0.23 which is which is indicative of the percent chance of you of each loot chest containing a card you're going to get 28 29 cards 30 cards a season and 30 cards a season times you know 24 seasons roughly a year right because it's every 15 days you're getting that's a 700 cards for free playing this game at bronze and silver that's not a lot of collection power that's not a lot of financial cost that's not a lot of um even it's not even a lot of time and attention because you're just going to play for half an hour probably a day and hopefully you enjoy the game anyways and you're going to compile yeah most of them are going to be commons but 500 even if they're 720 um, cards by five collection power that's another 4,000 cp that you're going to put in in a year and then the next year, it's going to be more of the same and more of the same. And you could do this. You absolutely could do this for between bull, bull cycles and just enjoy the game for what it is entertaining with a little bit of financial opportunity. And then when the next bull run comes along, you've got 700 cards, right? 720 cards per, per year times four years between usually bull cycles. You're going to get 2,900 free cards that are going to be selling for a penny when you receive them, but then maybe selling for 10, 20, 50, a dollar um per unit by the time you get into that next bull cycle and that's where us dollar value starts to grow for your account this is why i really think time and attention is what you all you need to have fun and to earn with splinterlands um certainly you need to have some level of summoner we're talking level two level three of one or two summoners which is not not free maybe you got to rent them maybe you got to buy them but with assuming you can figure that out i think this is possible for you and so i hope you I hope you find that plausible. And if you don't, I'd love to see a comment below so I could hopefully engage you on that topic. I really think if you're patient about this and if you enjoy the game and the process, that sort of accumulation is going to come naturally. And that sort of opportunity is going to blossom for you also. Guys, thanks so much for your time and attention. Have an amazing day. God bless.